Russia is opening a new front in Ukraine, the situation in Kharkiv is becoming increasingly dramatic. Russian troops have occupied the northern part of Vovchansk in Kharkiv region and are encircling the town from the east, BILD reported on Wednesday, May the 15th. According to BILD's open data analysis expert Julian Ropka, the occupants have entered the northern part of Vovchansk and there is fighting in the area of the meat processing plant. Fighters of the Freedom to Russia Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps are fighting in the defense. At the same time, Russian troops are trying to outflank the town four kilometers to the east where they have managed to cut the road from the Vovchansk to Tik, said Robka. Near the town, the occupiers have captured the villages of Pletenivka, Ogotsov, Gatischi and Bugrovatka. At the same time, Bild confirms the pace of the Russian advance has slowed. At the same time, Russian troops are advancing towards the village of Lipsy, but there they are storming only with infantry without hardware. The occupiers, according to the analyst, managed to take the villages of Strelecha, Krasny, Pilna, Borisivka, as well as enter Lukyansi and Hlubok. Ukrainian MP Oleksiy Goncharenko also wrote that the Russians are holding positions on the territory of Vovchansk and the town is under occupation. Some telegram channels quoted Kharkiv region police officer Denis Yaroslavsky as saying that Russian troops are already on the streets of Vovchansk. In this case, in Ukraine, discussions continue on the opening of a new front by the Russian armed forces. We are talking about the Russian army taking control of approximately 130 square kilometers of territory in the north of the Kharkov region, including part of the territory of the city of Volchansk. Ukrainian politicians, political scientists and military personnel are trying to figure out who in Ukraine is to blame for the loss of at least 11 settlements in the Kharkov region in less than three days, as well as what threats hang over the Ukrainian armed forces in the future. One of the threats being considered for Syrsky's troops is that if the capture of Volchansk is completed, the Russian army can launch converging attacks from three directions at once and knock out the Ukrainian armed forces from vast territories in the Volchansk Vorechnaya Russian border segment. The Ukrainian media fears that these lands will not just turn into a buffer zone but will come under the full control of Russia and will make it possible to carry out further offensive actions to completely cut off the Kupianskaya group from supplies. Let us remind you that now part of the territories north of Kupiansk is controlled by the Russian armed forces. Powerful explosions hit the main base of Russian military aviation in Crimea in evening hours of May 15 and set fires burning for hours, in long-range strikes the Kremlin said were American Adikms missiles fired by armed forces of Ukraine gunners. Local social media followed by regional officials reported more than 20 explosions of varying intensity audible in the vicinity of Belbek airfield. Russian officials in the occupation authority in the Kremlin-occupied Crimea in early statements said Ukrainian forces had launched long-range missiles at Belbek airfield but all the Ukrainian weapons were shot down. Later official announcements, among them by the Moscow-appointed mayor of Sevastopol Mikhail Razvoziv, said US-manufactured Adikms missiles had been used in the alleged failed strikes. The Russian officials claimed all the Adikms were intercepted by Russian air defenses, but some of the US-made precision-guided weapons had dispersed cluster munitions, prompting the authorities to warn the public not to touch them. Independent analysts and local social media contradicted the Kremlin narrative that a major Ukrainian missile strike against Belbek caused no damage. Comments in Sevastopol and Crimean military chat groups confirmed the launch of air defense missiles but, also, multiple explosions on the ground within the confines of the airfield. Independent analysts said recordings of major fires burning at the airfield for at least two hours following the strikes, and secondary explosions unconfirmed but reported widely by local residents as the fires burned, could possibly be evidence that the target of the Ukrainian missile strikes were not aircraft but Belbek airfield's ammunition bunkers and fuel depots. A missile strike on a Russian airfield in occupied Crimea could have damaged MiG-31 fighters. In total, 24 airplanes and 6 helicopters can be counted at this base. According to Astra Channel 2 MiG-31 aircrafts, an air defense missile system, S-400 and a warehouse of fuels and lubricants were destroyed at the Belbek military airfield that night. Two Russian servicemen were killed, 13 were injured.